So Christians basically worship the fallen star or the, the sun of the morning. And what that really means is in the Bible, because you need to understand that the Bible is an esoteric book that is presented in an exoteric manner. So what do I mean by that? It's an objective, it's a series of objective passages to help you pass your test that is, that is based on some form of subjectivity. Because the best objective statement you can ever make is a subjective statement. Like, for example, um, it's always the brightest after the darkest hour. Because that means what? The sun come up after what? The darkness come up. So what we have here is a collection of, of you know, passages of rites and rituals that men and, men and women back in the day came up with based on the transits, looking as above, so below, looking at what the people were going through so they can figure out how to organize your own mind into some type of culture, some type of religion, into some type of Saturnian structure so you all can build their society and they look at it like, okay, if we let society sink and people get lost in their animalistic nature and not organize it, then, then we're just kind of wasting resources, which is just men which is just men and women, pretty much, because you guys are the resources they used to, what, build society, your sweat, blood, and tears. Okay, so now what we get into, now we got that out of the way, we go into the, the sun of the morning in the Bible, we're basically just talking about the energy spectrum of Venus, because what happens when you go to the church? All y'all go to the church, and all y'all get lost in the energy of love, and when you're in love with something, you when you are in love, you're basically saying that you are inside the energy spectrum of love, but since you don't have the sufficient mind to look at, not you personally, just people you know, to create a spaceship, a mind that is outside looking in at the situation so you can see where that situation is starting to go. It's kind of like me throwing a, a, a bowling ball down the alleyway and I can clearly see where, see where it's going. But for some reason, when you so lost in the form of objectivity, you can't see where your subjectivity might be going to because really, because when, when we talk about subjectivity, what am I talking about? I'm talking about your yin realm, your unconscious, your subconscious realm. Because your internal realm is always reacting to the, to the external realm and things like that. This is why it gets so deep. Because they be setting up, they be setting up like rituals and spells and things like that in plain sight that you can't even see. Like eating the bread, the bread and blood of Jesus Christ. That's a spell. That's a ritual that you're doing on yourself. And when you believe in that, then. Your, your your mind create that experience it create that belief create that situation and the more the more the more you do it it become like a habit it become like a stranded core it be, you become kind of like a crack addict literally you feel start, you start to feel guilty worry if you don't go to church on time if you don't please the pastor because you think he's your middle in between you and god but the bible clearly tells you the spirit of god is dwells inside the temple of man which is Something along these lines anyways. But the temple is just this body. So you, so you already got the spirit. You already got the temple. But you keep giving up these resources to another man's and woman's interpretations and resources outside of you. So when you go to church, you get lost in the energy uh, of Venus, of love, of value, of appreciation. And at that, you go to church, you act phony, really. You pretend to be happy around... People pretend to be happy around everyone else. And... They're like, yeah, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And we talk about Venus. This is like the esoteric geometrics of what goes on when you go to church, pretty much. You're all of, everybody that goes to church is practicing basically um, the fall season type energy. The fall between Raphael, Uriel, between, you know, um, we're basically we're talking about the arc, the arc of the heaven. So when I say that, I mean, you're practicing Libra, love, value, and appreciation externalized in the form of a structure so y'all like to go give that out to each other y'all like to speak it y'all like to talk about it y'all like to praise the pastor y'all like, like to just give out this love value and appreciation external with y'all mouth that, that, that's that's what libras do and things like that they start to initiate one-on-one -on -one relationships but they give out some form of value and it could be material value and you we complete this cycle of venus by what Taurus because Taurus is also ruled by Venus, ruled by the yin side of Venus. So Taurus understands to keep the value and appreciation and love to themselves, which is which has to do with security and stability and safety and things like that. So, down to even with Libra, you start to externalize love, value, and appreciation. You might even give them money 
to show that the to show that you love the church and things like that. While them they playing out the rules of Taurus, you playing you paying tithes and things like that. They keeping the money. They keeping the value that you externalize. They can keep building their corporations. So they can keep building their ministry and things like that. And they make you give up all this blood, sweat, and tears. And most people don't even know what they doing and why they doing it. They just think like, yeah, this is what I gotta do to go to heaven. This is what I gotta do to please God and things like that. But it's really just a man-made interpretation. And God, at the end of the day, couldn't really care less about another man's woman interpretation. Because we all looking at the same thing and it ain't no... Because they be trying to make you guys feel like this is wrong, like astrology is wrong, numerology is wrong, the occult is wrong. They made up even these words to associate with what that is. So it's not even, um, like God don't even speak. We created these languages. We created these cuneiforms. We created these letters. We created these signs. We created these. We created all these things. God got nothing to do with that. We gave these things bad meanings and good meanings and things like that. Man get lost in interpretation. And you got to remember, you always have to look at things from your own relative position in space and time. Whenever you don't do that, you're going to get lost in someone else's bullshit. Because what's good for you ain't necessarily good for somebody else. And what's bad for somebody else ain't necessarily bad for you. So you got to understand, don't get lost in these words. Don't get lost in these linguistics. You know, this this man-made construct. God is beyond all these things. God go beyond these things. That's why, like, you don't understand both the feminine realm and the, and the you know, masculine realm. And harmonize these two so you don't get lost in, in nothing. Because God don't need these religions. These religions didn't exist, like, in, in the time of Sumeria and Babylon. Not that that's good or bad, but it's like, basically, it's like people saying... Okay, Jesus, let's say Jesus came to Israel or whatever, right? Jesus came, sent his message, whatever. Okay, what about the people in America? What about the people in America? What, God ain't sending no Jesus or nothing like that? Like, the, so God just, they just cursed people and things like that? Like, they, they, they don't deserve to be saved or anything like that? But when you really get deeper into it, guys, I promise you, all you're going to do is just find a bunch of astrology, a bunch of numerology, and Jesus was already in America. Just in an Indian cultural version. Char like even there's characters depicted carrying the cross in America by some Indian niggas. So it's a it's a it's it's about astronomy and astrology. When you understand the science, you understand what, what they was pointing to when they created a cross and things like that. And oh and why they have a sun behind Jesus' head and all these things. You just gotta start getting into it, start deciphering these codes. Instead of just sitting back and letting the shadow government program you however they want to program you. And they got so many, and so they, since they run a lot of the things nowadays and things like that, they got a lot of ways to attack you and to make you feel kind of like guilty, scared, worried. So don't get lost in these traps. Don't get lost in Venus. Because that's just one energy spectrum. Real fucking shit.